All right, time now for your winners and losers in week five. BMAC, we'll start with you. Who's your biggest winner? My biggest winner, you talked about Alabama, right? Not only did they come up with a big time win, but the good news in regards to the win, hearing that their star quarterback potentially will be able to participate. The injury isn't as serious as many thought based on his expressions when he ran off the football field. Because we know one thing about Alabama, they're a much better team when number nine is in the lineup. They have championship aspirations. This is a team that can do a lot of big things when he is in the lineup. And granted, we saw some nice things from Jalen Milrow, but clearly you want to have Bryce Young in uniform starting throwing outstanding touchdowns to his pass receivers so they're the biggest winner for me because it's I don't want to if he was out for the entire year guys I don't want to say the season is over for Bama but clearly they're not the same team without Bryce Young as they would be with him so me personally Crimson Tide they're the biggest winner today hearing that the injury is not serious to Bryce Young yeah, I'm going to go with Clemson as my big winner. A, a 30 to 20 win over NC State that was a little deceptive because Devin Leary scored a garbage touchdown there in the final minute or two. But I think Clemson, after what happened last week against Wake Forest, DJ Uyunglele becoming a weapon through the air, something we had not seen all year and really dating back through all of last year as well. Following it up with a game like this in a big time environment, recognizing that you're the man and being able to take control not only through the air, but also on the ground. Two rushing touchdowns were what's huge for Clemson, incorporating that part of his game into the offense. And then the defense, even without Brian Brzee, you saw these guys step up in a big way. Tyler Davis, Miles Murphy, KJ Henry in the backfield the entire night against Devin Leary in that passing attack for NC State. So I think for Clemson, a very complete win over a top 10 team. That was very important after what happened last week in that emotional win over Wake Forest. To me, that, that, that acknowledges and that establishes Clemson as a legit threat, not just to contend in the ACC, but in the college football playoff race. Because I think going into that game, we still sort of wondered, hey, was that a fluke over Wake Forest, or is DJU really back? I think we we know now that he is back. Yeah, it leads him to another home victory. That's 37 straight wins at home for Clemson, which is an absolutely impressive streak. Uh, longest streak in FBS since Oklahoma won 39 straight from 2005 to 2011. All right, as for a team that didn't help themselves out, BMAC, who disappointed you the most? Oh, my goodness. They disappointed me, but in regards to betting, they actually helped me out because I took <laughs> the opposing team, and that's Oklahoma. What is going on with the Sooners, right? We saw what happened last week against Ken, uh, Kansas State. Thought Many people thought they would bounce back and play with a sense of urgency. Another slow start once again led to a huge big win for TCU. And talking about TCU dominating, they put, what, 27, 24 points up on OU in the first quarter. So it's safe to say, granted, anything related as far as Big 12 aspirations is disco dead for OU. They're currently a bottom three team in the Big 12. Yes, you heard me correctly. OU, they're a bottom three team in the Big 12. Big 12 conference championship games, anything that you can think of as far as competing in their conference to make something happen, to, to, to fight for a trophy, is disco dead. They're the biggest loser. And the way they lost was just horrible. But... Like I stated, guys, I took TCU. I didn't even need the five points, but I took <laughs> them anyway, but I feel real good. Well, TCU didn't get to 62 against Oklahoma, so they have that in common with Aaron Judge, at least on Saturday. But my biggest loser is going to be Georgia. I think when, you know, you got to win, but when is a win not really a win? It's when you really can't do anything in the red zone against a pretty bad Missouri team. And I think back-to-back -back weeks, you've seen a very sluggish Georgia team. And I think that's concerning, right? Because you wanted to see more of a difference maker out of Stetson Bennett. He hasn't shown it yet. And I think maybe now after these two games, Georgia is not necessarily going to get the benefit of the doubt that a defending national champion uh, gets, especially one that was so dominant last year. So I think when you, when you look at the landscape of college football, Ohio State rocking and rolling. We saw that today. Alabama overcomes an injury to the Heisman Trophy winner and still not only wins, but covers on the road against Arkansas. Now you have Clemson sneaking up. You got Michigan doing Michigan things. I don't necessarily think George is going to get that benefit of the doubt anymore.
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.